Uh, I want to welcome all our viewers around the world that are watching us right now. I want to welcome you. And I know that what God has for you in this season, you will not miss it. Uh, we'll be talking on power to thrive in this uncertain period. The power to thrive in this uncertain period, in this season of uncertainty, power to thrive. The power to the power not just to survive, but to thrive. And that there's compound power. There is compound power of the spirit. I want to thank you, Sister Wayne from um, Taiwan, joining us this morning on this broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining us on the line. And as men that will be joining us from different parts of the globe uh, to be a part of this service. We thank you for joining us. And please, as you are watching this broadcast, uh, please share the broadcast. Share it on your platform. Share it with your friends. And I believe that in this season, the Lord will show himself very strong in your affairs in the name of Jesus Christ. I know Amen. quite right that there is no one that is on this platform that will go without a touch of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to know that God is seated in heaven and he rules in the affairs of men. We'll be talking in this hour, power to thrive. The power to thrive. Uh, power to thrive in this season. And I want to let you know that that power to thrive is the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Bible spoke about Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19, talking about the power that raised Jesus from the dead, that power that Jesus was talking about, it says the exceeding greatness of his power that raised Christ from the dead. I want us to know that power is a compound power. <laughs> that power is a power that is made up of all other powers. So it's not one dimension of power. I mentioned that power in when I said there are 10 resurrection power dimensions. Uh, we mentioned that on our on our prayer line in some weeks ago that there are 10 dimensions of power that manifested during the resurrection. And, and there are powers that were woken up as a result of this resurrection. And I believe that... Uh, as a result of that, heaven is going to break out on you in a very special way today in the name of Jesus Christ. That power of resurrection is coming full force in your direction in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of resurrection is coming full force in your direction in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to let you know you will not miss out of your blessing in this season. You will not miss out of your blessing. In this season, I pray for somebody here. You will not miss out of that blessing or resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not miss out of the blessing or resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. That exceeding greatness of his power that raised Christ from dead will raise you up, will raise your career up, will raise your children up and make them to sit where they belong in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power to become. And John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, this, that, he said as many that believed him, gave you power to be called sons of God. So I want to let you know there's power to become, to become uh, a successful mother, power to become uh, a successful a, a successful businessman, power to become who God has ordained you to be, power to become the, the destiny that heaven has ordained for you, power to become it. That is going to be coming for you. It's part of the package of the power of resurrection. I will speak about the power that was activated uh, in this season. And, and those powers that are activated are going to be made manifest in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I spoke about these things because I wanted to know that those power, they exist. The power that was at work. I mentioned there is power to become John 1 12. As men that, that believe gave he power to become sons of God. Not everybody become who they are meant to be. 
I want to say to all of you, not everybody become who heaven has ordained them to be. Remember, Jacob was born. When he was born, we saw that it took power for him to become Israel. Remember that. Bibles are power with God. That was Genesis 32 from verse 24 down. And Jacob was left alone until he had an encounter with power. And the, but make it very clear in that place, he had an encounter with power. And by that power, he said that had power to prevail. And he prevailed and he became Israel that day. Not everybody has the power to become who they are meant to be. But by this anointing of the Holy Ghost today, the power you need to become who heaven has ordained you to be will be released upon your life in Jesus' name. Uh, I, I will talk about this other dimension of power later in the evening broadcast by 7, uh, by that should be around 8, 8.45. But in this service, I will talk about one of the power that was activated in this period of resurrection is the power of faith. Is the power of faith. First Corinthians 15 verse 17. It said, At Christ not risen, it said, Our Amen. faith will have been in vain. Our faith will have been fruitless. But thank God that when Jesus rose, he did not only rise, he rose with other people. That has been, he rose with every other person that literally uh, has been dead before him. The devil has held many people down. And he thought, when he met with Jesus, he thought it's going to be like he did for every one of them. But he did not know that Jesus is going to be the last one that he was going to, that he was going to be involved with that would lead to anything that he has never seen before. Uh, I believe that at this season, uh, uh, the Lord in his mercy, he said, the power that he made it clear that the power uh, he did not know that Jesus is going to be the last one. Amen. I'm, I'm going to have a little uh, sorry about this. I'm going to uh, uh, how would I call it? Make sure that everybody is getting what I'm saying. Amen. I would just want to mute the noise in the background. Okay. Now, we're saying here uh, to everyone um, that here, the power of Jesus, that power was released. Uh, the power was released to be able to bring many that have been dead, to bring them out of the grave. The power of Jesus was not just power that the enemy could tie down. He did that for everybody. He held them down. They could not come out. But Jesus released these ones that he met there in the grave. Men that were before him, Abraham, Isaac, all the men of faith, Elijah, all of them, they were released from the grave when Jesus came out of the grave. He brought them out, he led captivity captive. And that was what made it possible for us today to be born again. And one of the things that was born when we became born again is what we call the force of faith. The force of faith is one of the things that was born after Jesus resurrected from the dead. And we saw that faith became one of the forces of, uh, of, of resurrection after Jesus rose from the dead. Faith became one of the force of the recreated spirit. Ephesians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, By grace are ye saved through faith. By grace are ye saved through faith. In other words, faith was activated when Jesus rose from dead. And it was the grace that enabled us to assess the power that Jesus had. When he rose from dead, remember Ephesians 1 19 says, And the exceeding greatness of his power, which he have towards us who believe. In other words, it is by faith we were able to assess the power that Jesus used to rise from the dead. And that power, you don't have access to that power except through faith. 
And you cannot have faith except you are born again. And that is why by grace are ye saved through faith. So one of the forces that rose or that came alive after Jesus rose from dead is the force of faith. And that force, that force came alive in our recreated spirit. The force of faith is a force that came alive in our recreated spirit. There are forces of the spirit that are there inside your spirit. And one of those forces is the force of faith. And what does the force of faith does? The force of faith is with what you use to live. Now we have Abaku, the book of Abaku, chapter 2, 1 to 4. Abaku, 2, 1 to 4. He said, I will stand upon my watch and hear what God will say. And he said that I will hear what he will say. And he said, the vision, I'm going to write it down. And when I write it down, this vision will speak at the end. And he now said, this vision, no matter what it is, in verse 4, he said, the just shall live by his faith. In other words, no matter the vision, no matter what God has told you about your destiny, without faith, it cannot become a reality. The just shall live by his faith. In other words, faith is needed if you are going to see the realization of your destiny. And that's why faith is very important. That's Abaku chapter 2, 1 to 4. That's why Paul said in Galatians 2 to 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless not I. But Christ that liveth in me, the life I now live, I live by faith of the Son of God. I live by faith of the Son of God. That was the kind of life Paul lived. We lived a life of faith, and all believers, we are meant to live a life of faith. That's what the Bible says, that we walk by faith and not by sight. And one of the power of faith is that any time you believe God for a thing, that faith releases the hand of God. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Isaiah 3 verse 1. I want to pray for somebody right now. Uh, the Lord is showing me somebody. You have tackling pains on your gum, on the lower part of your gum. Uh, they, are, they are underneath your gum there. You are having some challenges there. God is healing you right now as I speak. And lower part of your gum, uh, somebody is having a, a challenge in that place. The Lord is healing you right now. And please let me know. Uh, you send me a message uh, because I know somebody is receiving God's healing touch. In fact, the power of God is numbing that pain in that part of your body. As the Lord has done over the period of these brokers that many have been healed. The Bible says, who has believed our report? Isaiah 3 verse 1. Let him expect to see the harm of God revealed. He said, who has believed our report? To whom is the hand of God revealed? Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of God revealed? In other words, when you believe God on what he has said, his hand will be released to bring that thing to pass. When you believe what God has said in his word and you act on it, you will see the hand of God. And there's any time we need the hand of God in our affairs, it is now. Somebody is watching me right now. As you believe the word of God in this season, the hand of God will be released over your affairs. I see the hand of God being released in your affairs to bring a to bring Ezra 831 to pass. That the hand of God will be upon you to deliver you from the hand of your enemy. And as such thing that lay in wait, I pray for you that the hand of God will be upon you to deliver you from ambushment. The hand of God will deliver from what has been laid for you as ambushment. Psalm 98 says, it said the right hand of God has gotten him the victory. Without the hand of God, you cannot experience the victory. I don't know the battles you are facing right now, but I know the hand of God will bring you victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 98 Verse 1 to 3, it said, The hand of God, the right hand of God, has gotten me victory. It said, Who has believed our report? To whom is the harm of God revealed? In this season, if you believe the report of the Lord, you will experience the victory of the Lord. Everyone that experienced the hand of God, 
is because they have believe in the they have belief in what God has said to them, and that is why we are talking about the power of faith to thrive in this season. The power of faith to thrive in this season. If you look, notice that we have been having a lot of medical advice. In this season, have been said to us that we should cover ourselves very good. Let's follow those advices. What your hand do? What you're supposed to do? But understand, apart be, beyond that, I want you to also put on your shield of faith. Put on your shield of faith. You are wearing your face mask. It is good. It's necessary. Please do that, as you have been told. But put on your faith mask also. Put on your faith mask. Put on your faith shield. Because in this season, your faith is your greatest shield. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. It said, taking in the shield of faith. The way a woman take in. Before a woman said that she is pregnant, is because she has been tested positive. Now, now in this season... Not only should you go for tests, you should also go for tests to be tested for to, for faith, because the Bible taking in the shield of faith, because you need to be positive for faith to be able to be shielded. Your faith is your shield. Your faith is your shield. It's time to put on your faith shield. It's time to put on the shield of faith. Because what is in the atmosphere is an invisible arrow. See what it said there. It said, above all, above all, take in the shield of faith. Above all. That's what it said here in Ephesians chapter uh, 6 verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which thou be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Right now, there are fiery darts that are going around. Fiery darts of viruses. Fiery darts of infection. And I can tell you, your greatest, your greatest protection in this season is your faith. Your faith become the shield that can deal with every flying arrow. We are in the season of arrows flying in the day. Uh, your faith is a tangible force. That's why taking, above all, taking the shield of faith. Faith is takeable. <laughs> faith is an handleable force. Faith is tangible. It's a taking in the shield of faith so you can take faith. Faith, when you are taking it, you know that you are taking it. When you are standing on the word of God over an issue, that is faith substance you are standing on. So faith is takeable. Say, take in the shield of faith with which thou will quench all the fiery darts of the evil. Faith is your greatest asset in quenching all the fiery darts of COVID-19. Faith is your greatest asset in quenching, in paralyzing all the COVID-19 releases and venom in the atmosphere. When you go out, go out in faith. You are shielded by faith. You are shielded going out. When you drive out, drive out in faith. When you go to the store, go to the store in faith. I want to let you know that wear your greatest mask. Your mask should be the mask of faith. Understand that faith is one of the armories of weapon. So when you are building your faith, you are building your shield. You are building your defense. That's what the Bible says, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you are building your faith, you are building your defense mechanism. You are building your shield, your, 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 your defense missile shield. No matter the arrow the enemy is throwing in this season, you cannot be a victim of his fiery darts. Because those darts, they are going to be, you are going to be defended against them. There is faith is a neutralizer. Faith will neutralize all the arrows the enemy is sending your way. Even when you have bad dream, faith can diffuse it. 
Faith can diffuse every attack of the enemy against you. The power of faith is your power of protection. And that is why you must put your faith to work in this season. When you have faith, you have the neutralizer in your hand. When you have faith within you, you have the neutralizer in, inside your hand. If you don't build your faith, then you have no built defense. Somebody have said, you prepare your weapon in time of peace so that you can be ready in time of war. You prepare your weapons in the time of peace so you can be ready in times of war. If there's any time to prepare your weapon of faith, it is now. You prepare your weapon in time of peace so that you can be ready in time of war. The lack of build up is the reason why believers cannot withstand the attacks of the enemy. If you don't build up your faith, you will discover that the enemy will take you for a ride. But I have good news for you. As I'm speaking to you right now, faith is being activated in your spirit. Faith is being activated in your heart. And that is why we are talking about the spirit of faith. Because your, your the faith is one of the greatest weapons the Lord has left for us as believers. The devil will not stop attacking you. And that's why you must not stop putting on your faith. And what is faith therefore? If this is what faith will do for you. If faith will protect you against satanic battle. If faith will protect you in this season. Then what is faith? And that is what we try to establish for us this morning. And we will, ra we will round up there uh, for the next brokers when we come in here together. What is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Faith is a weapon you use to deal with unseen realities. We are dealing with an unseen enemy right now. But you can use faith to deal with unseen forces. Now, the spiritual solutions are superior to medical solution and scientific solution. Thank God for our medicals. Thank God for science. It has brought so much blessing for us. But they have limits. Because why am I saying that? Medical solution or scientific solution cannot deliver from satanic oppression. How can you use Panadol to cast out the devil? If a case is satanic in nature, Panadol can deal with such problems. Only the name of Jesus in the mouth of a believer that is born again can check that out. There are a spiritual solutions that are superior to scientific solutions. If there is no answer for the challenge you are facing right now in the medical world, there is answer with God. If your problem cannot be solved medically, it can be solved godically. There are solutions with God. There is no question that does not have an answer with God. And that's why I say your victory is not a right. Your victory is a fight. And you fight that fight with the fight of faith. Only you only win when you are fighting by faith. First John 5 4. This is the victory of overcoming the world, even our faith. Then what is faith? Faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things you have not seen. What is that substance? Substance is not an abstract, it's a material, it's a matter. Substance is something that occupies a space. That is why faith is what you don't see, but you have the evidence of his existence. Faith is what you don't see, but you have the evidence of his existence. Faith is what you don't see, but you have the evidence of his existence. The evidence of things not seen, meaning that things that are supernatural, there's always has to do with faith. The where the substance of the word is in place in your heart, 
that is where faith begins to start its work. Where the substance of the word of God is in your heart, that is where the declaration of faith begins from. That is where the substance begins from. What are we saying, therefore, is this, that the word of God is the substance of faith. Faith is the evidence that the unseen can be attained. Faith is the evidence that the unseen can be attained. I want to let you know that the substance of the word of God will cause you to have an expectations. Just like we see uh, a woman that is pregnant, she's expecting something to be delivered. That is how faith works. In the word of the spirit, the word of God is a material which can be undoed that become the evidence. In the word of the spirit, the word of God is the material which can be undoed and they become the substance that will produce the faith you are looking for. And that is why faith is a lifeline of the believer. By faith, you live by faith. It is the lifeline of the believer. Nothing happen or get done or across to the believer without their faith. God is a spirit. And it's from the spirit world that God controls the natural world. So if you are operating in faith, you are operating in the supernatural that can control things on the earth. I want to let you know that faith is something that is superior to what you believe. Your act, your act of believing puts you in the class of God. Mark 9, 27. It said that, do you believe? And it says that those that believe, those that believe what God has said, nothing is impossible for them. In other words, faith brings to the realm of possibilities from what look like impossibilities. Now, what is faith in terms of a difference from believing? When God's word says something, when you agree with that word, that is believing. When the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. And you believe that word, even though you are having pains. When you agree with that word, that is belief. But now, when you act on what you believe, it becomes faith. When you act on what is believed, it becomes faith. What are we saying, therefore, is this. Faith is believing what you have agreed with God's word. Faith is action stemming from what you believe. Faith is action stemming from what you believe. Faith is putting, is putting God's word to action. That is, you are putting the things you are believe and you are acting on it. The action part of what you believe is what is called faith. If you believe that you are well, then take step and act well. That the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. If you believe that you are well, then begin to act well. Begin to speak well. Joel chapter 3, verse 10. So let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. It is let him say, I am weak. Like I said on Friday, if you cannot say so, you will not see so. Because when faith comes into your heart by the word of God, then you release that faith through your mouth. Like I said to us, that faith is putting God's word into action. Faith is acting on what you believe. And how does that faith come? That faith comes purely by the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. As you are hearing me right now, faith is coming to you. And what are we saying? Just as a physical body takes physical food, 
to produce physical energy, physical, uh, physical power called strength. In a similar way, your spirit man must feed on spiritual food to produce spiritual power called faith. I come again. Just as you put physical food into a physical body to produce physical power called strength, in a similar way, you have to take in spiritual food into your spirit man to produce spiritual power called faith. When you put the word of God into your spirit, when you feed your spirit with the word of God, that spirit will bat power called faith. And when your faith is in place, Satan is doomed. When your faith is in place, Satan is doomed. Jesus said to Peter in Luke 22, 31 to 32, he said, Satan, he said, Peter, Satan, I desire to destroy you, but I pray for you that your faith does not fail. If your faith does not fail, Satan's plan in your life will fail. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. In other words, no matter how mad the devil is against your life, if your faith does not fail, his plan will fail. Luke 22, verse 31 to 32. Luke 22, 31 to 32. It says, the enemy has desire to have you. The enemy has desire to destroy you. Maybe you have a dream last night. And you have that dream, and the enemy wanted to, the enemy, you have seen all manner of things come against you in your dream. When you rise up by faith, your faith can destroy what the enemy has put in place against your life. Your faith can destroy what the enemy has put against your life. That's why when you wake up, don't agree with negative dream. You cannot change what you accept. When you rise up from a negative dream, rise up and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe in your word. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, I condemn. I condemn it. No matter the challenge you are facing, no matter what comes against you spiritually, you can destroy it by your faith. Your faith is the power in the mouth of a believer. And that's why you must build your faith in this season. Read the word. Settle down and read the word of God. And we thank God that we have it on your phone. We have it on the internet now. You can read it on your phone. Read the Bible every day. Read the word of God. Read the New Testament. Read the word of Jesus. Put it to your heart. Put it to practice. Say it and act on it. As you do that, you walk in victory. Because faith can quench all the fiery arrows of the wicked against you. I told you of a woman that was prayed for. We put prayer, the prayer together on a CD in America. And they sent it to her. And she was listening to that prayer. She was listening to it. She was listening to it. And by that prayer, we saw what happened. In the middle of the night, the word of God entered into her body. She removed the ventilator. She removed all the diet in her body. But then a doctor came. What happened? He said, Jesus has shown up in my room. Jesus has shown up as, as a result of that word. The word of God is powerful. She acted on her faith. She removed the ventilator. When she saw energy coming to her spirit man, I thought of the prayer. I pray for you right now. Whatever the enemy has planned for your life, I speak in agreement with you. That agenda is destroyed right now in Jesus' name. I see that agenda destroyed in Jesus' name. And we have two kinds of faith. Two kinds of faith. You have sense, knowledge, faith, and revelational faith. We'll talk more about these things uh, in our next broadcast in the evening. Remember um, um, Titus and um, Thomas. He said, I will not believe until I see. Until I see, I will not believe. That is sense, knowledge, faith. But revelational faith is the faith that believe what God has said, even without any evidence. And that's the blessedness of faith that's blessedness of faith god said it and you believe it you just to the lepers he said go and you are and as they went they were cleansed they acted on what jesus said and the, the power of god came and cleaned their leprosy 
if you believe what God has said and you act on it, it activates the power of God. The lepers were cleansed as they obeyed the word of Jesus, as they went, as they acted on what God, as they behaved the word, God's power came and healed them. As you behave the word of God, I see God's power healing you. I want you to act well. Believe, not only believe, act on what you believe. Faith to be on stage. And when faith is on stage, God will be there. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to round up right now. Uh, if you are there, you are not born again. I want to pray for you. Faith does not work when you are not born again. Faith works. Faith is a force. In the spirit of the redeemed. Faith is a force. In the, in the recreated spirit of a believer. If you are not born again, this thing will not work. So if you are listening to me and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, wherever you are watching me around the world, this is your season to be born again. If you are not born again, you will suffer again. No matter what the enemy is doing, no matter what is around you, if you give your life to Jesus, your journey begins in victory. And no matter what challenges you face, remember, we are only here for a time. We are going to face eternity with God. If you are here saying, Pastor, I'm not born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. This is your best moment. I want to pray for you. Say with me, Lord, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to pray for many of us. If you are there, we are praying for those Today's anointing service. Uh, uh, if you are there, you can bring out your bottle of anointing oil. We'll be praying for you right now by this anointing of the Holy Ghost. This anointing will bring healing for you. Uh, I want to let you know that the anointing oil is the medium to which the Holy Ghost manifests its power. And by that anointing, you can raise up your bottle wherever you are. We'll pray over your bottle. We anoint you. We, uh, you anoint yourself where you are. You anoint your children. And I pray over this oil right now and say, I release God's power over this oil. By the word of the Lord, this oil become the holy anointing oil. The medium of manifestation of the power of God. By this, I pray, as you are anointed, I release God's healing power in your direction. As you are anointed, I release God's power to bring about your victory. I declare today, that by this anointing, there shall be good news for you this week. This anointing will bring announcement. By this anointing, you will experience supernatural manifestation today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, bring out your oil. If you are watching me live, bring out your oil. Or if you are watching me after this broadcast, we can just bless that oil and say, Lord, I bless this oil and become a holy anointing oil. You can do it by yourself. Your faith is what turns it so. I will take that little oil right now in your hand and we stand by what the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 verse 13. And they anointed David in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of God came over him. And by this anointing right now, by this anointing, and we can bring your oil out, put a little in your hand. As I agree with you right now, by this oil, any challenge you have in your physical body, by this anointing, I see you being healed in Jesus' name. I see you being healed in Jesus' name. That those that couldn't go to the hospital and you are down where you are, you are in pains, by this anointing, that yoke is broken on your body in Jesus' name. Place that oil on your head. He said... When he said, he said, he said, the Bible says, he said, he said, he said, he said let them call upon the door of the church and let them pray over them. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. By this anointing, I see you saved from every sickness and challenges in the name of Jesus Christ. By this anointing, I see this week become your best week. By this anointing, the power of resurrection will break out in every part of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I release this anointing to your life to work for you, to work for you. Anywhere you enter, mercy will appear with you. Anywhere you enter, favor will open the door for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, your hands will not be empty this week. The hand of God will rest over you. Thank you because it is done. 
In Jesus' you, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 In your various Amen. house there, uh, I, I, I join faith with you. You will have testimony. If you are watching Amen. from anywhere in the world and you want to, to pray with you, you can send your prayer request on that platform and we'll pick it up and pray with you. And if you are within London, you want to pray, you want me to pray for you, you can call me and pray with you. I want to let you know that your life will not remain the same again. I'll be back on this same platform, 7.45, at 8.45 uh, this evening as we have service of our, our U.S. church, uh, Washington, D.C., uh, Destiny Church. You can join us. I'll be talking on this concluding part of this message. And your life will not remain the same again. God bless you. And see you in the evening, 8.45 on this platform for another message on the power of resurrection. God bless you. Have a very wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you.